I hope by this time you have a better understanding of SNS and SQS as a service. In this particular topic, I would talk about architecture patterns, how to use these services in your design. Let's talk about that. First one I am taking here is from a blog post and I would include link for all these. This is a parallel processing with fan out architecture. Let me go to that blog and explain you the concept associated with that. So this is a blog which talks about getting started with Amazon S3 event driven architecture. Idea is very simple. What we want that as soon as a event happens into S3 related to object create, like put, post, copy, anybody uploads the object, copies the object multi-part upload completes i want to trigger a notification for that so see this we could configure a s3 bucket to automatically invoke a lambda function in response to a event happening for put related object put object related events so that is possible and this lambda can now talk to recognition this will work well but what if, if there were some challenges in the sense that we get so many of the requests into s3 and so many lambda Lambda functions are triggered. So that may be a little complicated to handle and retry the operation if things fail. So what we could do in this particular case, this process here was a synchronous processing. So when I want to have a reliable point to point processing, this could be a good architecture. But what if, if my architecture is little flexible and I don't want this point to point, but I need a asynchronous processing and queued point to point processing. So what we introduce here, we introduce a queue in between. So this queue would hold my messages and then lambda would be triggered based on the queue depth also if you want to or in the way you want no issues at all on that. So SQS would be holding those messages. So we created a decoupling between S3 and lambda here. So that is one way of achieving the architecture. Now what we see here it is a one to one kind of a message processing a message appears into the queue and then one lambda function would be triggered and message would be processed. What if, if we want this message to be processed by multiple endpoints? In that particular case, SQS won't be of use to me. What I could do a combination of SNS and SQS and create an architecture like this. So we have done further decoupling here. We have object uploaded into S3. And as soon as this upload finishes, what we are trying to do, we are sending this information to a SNS topic here. SNS topic then further informs SQS queues and we have three SQS queues and we have three different type of Lambda function performing various aspect on the file which has just been uploaded. Let me talk about what is happening here. So this is a image processing workshop or image processing workflow. We have our images being uploaded into S3 and as soon as it happens, that data goes into SNS and notification is generated. That notification will have a metadata about the object, key information, size of that, details of that S3 bucket. And that data is now passed to three queues parallelly as we see one queue here, second queue is here and third queue is here. What these queues are doing, these queues are basically holding your messages to be processed by different Lambda functions here. So I have one Lambda function who would use a service called Amazon Recognition, which is a machine learning artificial intelligence based image detection service. It can detect what type of image it is. Is it a building or a dog or a cat or a vehicle? What are the details of that? Is it a water body? Is it a jungle or is it a house? So it can detect all these things so we can send this information through a lambda to this service service will tell me what type of image it is and we can receive this information back what if we also want to resize that image to fit into the application so we want to trigger another lambda function the code could be written in that and then this would be triggered as a function and store its output of resizing image into a target s3 bucket so maybe my image uploaded here was of 16 mb size maybe my application doesn't support that big size so we could convert it and resize it to maybe a 2 mb of my image so that is possible Third thing we are doing here through SNS, this is a one to end relationship. SNS sends information to another queue and that queue is used to generate thumbnail of the image. 
So maybe we want to leverage thumbnail somewhere in our application, not the actual image. So we could have that thumbnail generated and put it into a target S3 bucket should not be a problem at all. So that is all possible. What we have here, we are creating a one to n kind of architecture and we are doing a fan out architecture and we are doing parallel processing here. So I hope this thing is clear. Another advantage of this approach is that I could have this Lambda function return into PHP. Just give an example. This could be a Python function or this could be a .NET or Java function doesn't matter. So you could clearly see that that is the advantage of using this decoupled architecture. So that is one architecture I wanted to talk about. Second architecture I wanted to talk about is queue integration with third party services on AWS. Now, people sometimes have an uh, impression that producer can only be in AWS cloud. That is not true. A producer can be on premises also. It is an API call we are making, right? So we can make a call and from here also we could invoke an API which is called send message into this queue and maybe multiple producer even on-prem and cloud, they can send messages into SQS and we have a Lambda function which is a message broker. This message broker takes the message information, passes it to a service who would actually perform processing. So here processing is not happening in Lambda. Lambda is just a message broker or forwarder in a way. And then it invokes a ECS or Fargate container on which the processing would take place. So that is another approach we could follow. And we have also integrated a SNS topic here. So in case Lambda is not able to trigger that Fargate cons consumer or something happens we could notify about any failure to the service and perform retry so that kind of option can be configured if the need be this is another blog post i have included the link for this here that is my queue integration with topic so see this one so we could create this type of retry mechanism and this has lots of information about how your task would be there what is the retry we have to perform all this flowchart will give you a lot nice information about how to utilize these services the last architecture i want to discuss here is about message filtering this can be a very useful thing in your application architecture now let's say i have a message broker here and it receives two type of messages or it want to send two type of message. One is your green message. Another is your blue message. One option for that is we could create two topics and one topic accepts green messages. Another topic accepts blue messages. And I go to my producer or publisher and say, Hey, you forward green messages to green topic and blue messages to blue topic. So that logic of filtering I am baking in or I'm including within my message publisher. But what if, if I want to keep it outside? That is also possible. So if I want, I could use topic based filtering or if I want, I could use attribute based filtering. So I would send messages to my publisher from publisher to topic and topic here would have a filtering mechanism for the data which is coming up. So filtering will happen here depending on the attribute you define. And then you could see multiple type of Pro, uh, consumers, sorry, subscribers can be accessing this information should not be a problem at all. So let me show you this also into the blog post and I'll include links for that. So simplify your pub sub messaging with SNS message filtering. What we are doing here, we are first doing filtering based on topic. And if we want, we could do attribute based filtering. Now example here is, let's say I have a application which is generating a uh, E which is an e-commerce website. So my buyer comes in, buyers may buy something. So that is order related event, maybe order canceled, order placed, and maybe another type of event we are capturing is a particular product page visited. So this dark color product page visited message has to be forwarded to a Lambda function who would include that into the next search attribute in a search engine. Whereas my order related information has to be processed through a queue by my payment gateway who would perform payment transaction or maybe fraud detection on the transaction which is happening. So I hope this thing is clear that how we could combine these two services and create a very decoupled architecture and do asynchronous processing whenever the need is. 
I want to summarize this chapter with a differentiation between both services because you may expect some questions in exam where you would be asked to use a service over the other. So let me give you some parallel comparison between SNS and SQS as a service. First thing in SNS is that message persistence is not there. Let me first talk about SQS. When a message is sent to a queue, you may maximum hold it for 14 days. Default is four days, but maximum time you could configure is 14 days. Even if nobody picks it up, you would be able to hold that message up to 14 days and then SQS would expire it. SNS doesn't have a holding mechanism. It is a forwarding service. It pushes messages as soon as it comes to the destination, to the subscriber. But what it offers you, it offers you a retry mechanism. So you tried to send an email, maybe it didn't work, then you may retry it automatically or maybe configurable value. So SNS just have a retry mechanism, but there is no save message. SQS has saving, which you could persist data for a 14 days period if the need be. What kind of delivery mechanism these services have? SNS is push. You get push messages on your mobile, you get SMS on your mobile, you get email on your Outlook. That is all the messages are being pushed to you. Whereas SQS is a poll or active mechanism. What you have to do as a receiver, you would go to that particular queue and get the message. Example I give is that let's say you have your letterbox. Again, that is the best example. So this is your letterbox. Somebody has put some letters inside it. You would decide on when I have to go and pick up those letters. Would I go hourly? Would I go daily? Would I go once in a week? So it is left on you to decide on how you would be accessing it. So you have to make active efforts to get those messages or we have to poll the topic. Sorry, sorry, poll the queue to get that information. So that is what SQS is. Next is how the terminology is different. In case of SNS, we call it publisher and subscriber. Publisher who publishes message, subscriber who receives the message automatically. SQS calls them sender or receiver. Somebody sends message and then other may plan to receive it. So that's how it would work. Next thing is a distribution model. And this is sometime little misunderstood. SNS is a one to many kind of architecture. SQS is a one to one architecture. When I say this distribution model, it is in terms of messages. So let me go on a blackboard and explain you this particular topic. Let me first explain about SNS, sorry, SQS. This is my SQS queue, right? When I have a topic, sorry, when I have a message coming here, so that message is waiting, right? Now, what I may have, I may have multiple publishers that doesn't have a problem at all. Multiple people can send. Sorry if I'm using the word interchangeably and confusing you. So this is what my senders are. These senders would be sending messages. Now these can be multiple, right? Maybe I have 10 system who is doing processing. All 10 of them can send message to the queue and maybe my receivers are also different. So what I have here, I have, let's say a group of 10 receivers and they would be receiving this message and processing it. What I mean by one to one here is in context of message. So when a message is picked up, what would happen? A message once picked up, let's say this message is picked up by this machine here or this receiver here. So it would receive that message, will perform operation. And once the processing finishes, it would issue a delete command on the message. And this message will be removed from the queue. So that would happen as soon as this SQS message is finished. Once the processing is done, a delete command would be issued on that. So what we are seeing here, one message is being consumed by one consumer. And that's why we call it, it is a one to one way of mechanism, right? On the other hand, when I'm talking about SNS topic, this is my SNS topic. And in this SNS topic, I may have multiple publishers and I could have 
multiple subscribers also no problem at all on that so maybe i have multiple s3 bucket and through that information is coming into sns topic and when that data comes here when that message comes here what may happen that this message may be processed by multiple receivers consumers at the subscribers at the back end so multiple subscriber can receive this information that is completely completely possible and most of the time in case of sqs these all my processing behind the scene will be happening by the same type of resources right but in case of sns these can be different type of resources one could be a lambda function here another could be a sqs queue another could be an http endpoint example of the image if you remember so we got an image uploaded into an s3 bucket that data goes through a topic lambda is performing check with recognition sqs may be storing it for something http endpoint is doing something on that so this is what we reference by a one is to an architecture so i hope this thing is clear and you have better idea of what i mean by one to one and what i mean by one to n it is in respect to the message itself it is not with respect to producer sender or consumer and subscribers all right the last point here is common use cases you will find that sns is most commonly used for application to application as well as application to person communication whereas sqs is mostly used for application to application like a decoupled architecture where less human interaction would be there and mostly component or your decoupled services would be talking to each other so based on that i hope you have a better understanding of sns and sqs and when to use one over the other what i am also doing i am including the service summary cards a one page refresher of all the things related to sns or sqs you would find it very useful when you are preparing for exam or you just want to reference some basic details of a service so this one is for sns and then here is for sqs also so go through this and you will have a much much better understanding of different aspect of these two services and i hope this was interesting and you have learned uh, in detail about decoupled architecture and sns sqs services thank you for listening i'll see you into the next section thank you